Now notice here, that's in 1 John chapter 2, verse 20, just seven verses later. It says, but the anointing which you have received of him abides in you. Abide. You hear that? The anointing abides. Why? Because the anointing is the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit doesn't come and go. Now, see, I'm killing all kinds of sacred cows here. When you hear people talk, well, the, the Spirit is lifted. Mm. O- only, you know, <laughs> to people that aren't born again, I guess. I mean, maybe he was present, but he ain't now. I mean, he wasn't in them. But the Spirit doesn't lift. You understand? Now, if you're not walking with him, you won't recognize him. You won't uh, acknowledge him. And so he's pretty much useless there by your side. Even though he's there with you, he won't, he, listen, he will never leave you nor forsake you. Do you get that? Amen. He has come to make his home in you. But if you don't engage with him, see, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. How? According to the power, Holy Spirit, within you, working in you. Ephesians 3.20 says. So the only thing he can do is whenever you allow his power to work in you. Many people have his power present, but it's not working. Do you get it? It lies dormant. He's ready to go, but because you don't think he's there, he can't do anything. Why? Because he has to work with you. He's not, you have to understand, he's not the doer. You're the doer. He's the helper. Do you get that? He is not going to take your position. You're going to have to let him help you as you do. And if you refuse to do, you are refusing to let him help. So you have to let him help you do. But to let him help you, you have to do. Amen? See, if I don't lay my hands on people, he can't heal them through me. He'd have to use somebody else or something. But listen, he doesn't just show up and do that. Why? Because he made a way for it to happen. What is that? Through a word of a believer or through the hands of a believer or through a cloth from a believer, something along those lines. But a believer, we are co-workers together with him. God isn't just saying that because he wants it. He's saying it because that's how it has to happen. He has, God does not have the right and authority on this earth to work spontaneously without a human engaging him. Okay, you say, how do you know that? Well, twofold. Number one, the Bible says it. Okay, number two, if that's not true, then God is responsible for every sick person that stays sick because he could have spontaneously moved on them. So he, that makes him guilty of every wrong, every bad thing that he didn't stop, all this kind of stuff. Is this making sense? Yes. Yeah. See, we have to realize how closely united we are to him to the point where he works through us. For the Old Testament saints, he would work for them because they were in covenant and because of Abraham, who was in faith, it came on through. But now in the New Covenant, New Testament, he works through us. Now, he works for us, he works with us, but he works through us. Amen? So when we stop and say, God, why didn't you do it? God, why don't you help? He said, no, no, no. I told you. Whatever you bind on earth, I'll bind in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, I'll loose in heaven. Where does the binding and loosing start? Here. Now, recognize, we do recognize what God has said, and so we speak binding and loosing in connection with what God has already said that is, in his opinion, already bound or loosed. Does that make sense? So we can't go against God and bind stuff that he wants loosed or loose stuff that he wants bound. Amen? Because he can't back that up. But how do we know that? We get in this book and find out what he has bound. And we find out what he wants loose, and then we agree with him. But he has to work through us just because he did it. He said all things have been put under Jesus' feet, yet we don't see all things under his feet. Why? Because legally, all things are under Jesus' feet. But Jesus is seated until all his enemies are made his footstool. Right? So that's up to us. Romans 16, verse 20. Chapter 16, verse 20. says, And the very God of peace shall crush, bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Notice how he's going to bruise Satan under your feet. Amen. He didn't just do it under Jesus' feet. Amen? But now notice, Jesus beat him. Now it's up to us to put our foot on his neck and keep him defeated. Amen. 
We are not trying to get victory. We are in victory and we are maintaining victory. Amen? You're not the sick trying to get healed. You are the healed and the enemy is trying to keep your health from you and he's trying to keep sickness and disease on you because he knows that if he can make you sick enough, number one, sickness usually makes people selfish. Number two, it makes them unable to actually get up and do stuff. That's why he likes sickness and disease and that's why God hates it. 